Hi, everybody. Well, I'm not that kind of storyteller that we just saw in some few minutes ago. I don't write stories. I don't, of course, not write even fiction stories. Uh, but when we think of optimism, and probably because I'm a scholar, you thought that I'm going to explain to you now in scientific ways what does optimism mean, how it comes from, I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you in that. I'm just going to share with you a real story, my life story, three pages from my diary that I kept during the war, the beginning of it in 1999. Bear with me while I read, try to imagine those moments, and try to feel the optimism in every sentence I read. <coughs> 24th of March, 1999. It is going to happen. Just five minutes ago, Barda, my sister, phoned us from Spain. She said that the war aircraft left Aviano base to bomb us. We have asked for this. We have prayed that this happens. She was crying on the phone, and the only thing I could think of telling her was, I'll speak to you tomorrow. I went to put on the Aero News, and I saw, it's true. I can see the war aircrafts myself leaving the Aviano base. We have made some preparations, but really we don't know what does the war and the bombing looks like. I have heard about the Bosnia situation. I have seen many movies, but now that we are just some minutes away from this actually happening, I do not know what to feel and what to do. My father has taken care of securing the windows so that they do not fall on us. My mother has prepared us a small runaway package in case we have to leave the house and flee. Me, my four years old daughter, my father, my sister, and my youngest brother are sitting and waiting. What are we waiting for? No one knows. We have only planned to stay together and hope that we will survive. I have taken care of all measures to save my daughter. I have put a letter with all info who she was and all the other details, some photos of me, of her father, and some phone numbers, just in case something bad happens. I guess a mother instinct makes you think first about your child before other things. I'm known as a person that does not panic. I take things slowly and peacefully. But tonight, I do not know how to express the mixture of the feelings I have right now. I'm happy and yet sad, courageous and frightened at the same time, scared but quiet. I have wrapped my daughter with two blankets and have put her between two sofas in the living room of my parents. I have ordered her to stay there and not move until I say so, or until I go to pick her up. As I'm writing these last lines, Pranvera, my younger sister, is making photos. She must be crazy, I thought. At these moments, she thinks of taking photos. She says she wants to capture the moments and make an album after. She's a bit crazy, I thought to myself. But then what am I doing? I'm writing on my diary. I must be just as crazy as she is. For whom am I writing this? Who will read this? And if they read it, will they care? Maybe. I'm sure someone will find it interesting how these final moments before the bombing were felt from a woman, young mother, a musician who had dreamed of playing piano at concerts in and out of Kosovo. Is this the end of my dreams? I hope not. I believe not. My daughter has already asked me when this will be over. I told her tomorrow, so I have to hope that tomorrow comes. It started now and I feel frightened and I do not know what will happen with us. I cannot continue to write anymore. The lights went off and I still hear the voice of my daughter crying and screaming. But I'm telling her and myself too, hang on my dear, tomorrow this will be over. 25th of March. Oh, what a night. I cannot believe that this was it. I thought it would be more terrible, but there were some loud noises, some big explosions and that's it. I have not slept the whole night long. I could not. My daughter had slept there between the two sofas. When she woke up in the morning, she asked me, Mom, is it already tomorrow? Yes, I said. And I felt so happy. I love tomorrows. We watched the news during the whole day. There were many bomb bombings throughout. And some people left their homes already today in the morning. I enjoyed the morning today. It was so silent. And I had a coffee with my sister. We laughed about our crazy and panicking behaviors from last night. But we were glad, so glad that we made it. I still do not know how it's going to be the next days, but I decided to celebrate one more day of my life. Life is worth to live it, every minute of it. I promised to myself that if I make it, 
if I'll be live after today, I will make sure I will celebrate life, enjoy it in any way I can. I look at my daughter's smile in the morning. She really thinks it's over. She's playing with her dolls. She does not understand what is happening. She's only happy when I say to her, Glenda, tomorrow we will do this or that. Today I promised to her that tomorrow we will go to see her grandparents living two blocks away. I was not sure if I would be able to go there, but we are staying only home and I only just shortly went out at the garden to smoke a cigarette with my sister. But I'll try to make the wish of my daughter come true, because she hangs up to tomorrow's, and I'm too in a way. At this moment, I remembered this movie I had watched a long time ago. The red hair Annie singing, Tomorrow, tomorrow, you're only a day away. But it's getting dark and the bombing might start again soon. But tonight I'm more peaceful in my mind and heart and more hopeful. I'm more confident that I'm going to experience many more tomorrows. I have to be, for the sake of my daughter at least. I brought her to life, I gave her life. I have to make sure she lives it and enjoys it. 5th of May, 1999. It's my birthday today, the 27th birthday. I feel happy despite the circumstances. We had a small birthday party in our new tent here at Stankovets camp. We had initially been placed in a tent with 80 people. Then only a few days later we were placed in another tent where only 30 people were living there. Yesterday we got our new home, a whole tent only for three families. We are quite happy. At least we are not so much squeezed here. I have three improvised beds in my side of the tent, for me and my daughter, for my brother, and a cousin of mine. They are young, 18 and 19 years old boys. I took them with me to save them from ending in the hands of Serb parliamentarians who were killing men mostly. I have three children now, my daughter and the two of them. I have to take care of them. Their lives are in my hands now. The other 10 inhabitants living with us were two brothers and their wives, also from Pristina, very good family indeed. We are getting along very fine. Today we even cooked coffee for my birthday. The life in the camp, you know, is okay, not so difficult after all. At least we are safe and alive. I came to camp after many days of fear for the life of my daughter and my life too, to be honest. I finally managed to leave Pristina on the 29th of April. Through the train, we headed for Skopje, but I was actually hoping to go to Austria in Graz, where I was for a study visit just two weeks before the bombing. In fact, when I remember, I had only come back on the 22nd of March with some other musicians with a bus from Graz through Hungary and Serbia. I think it was the only bus traveling to Kosovo in those days. And we were in the middle of a column of tanks and military vehicles. As we came through Podujevo to Pristina, we were afraid that we would be attacked by our UCK soldiers. Nobody would think that there is a civilian bus in the middle of the tanks row. But we did it, we managed, we survived and I came back. On the 23rd of March, I went to teach piano to my private student, Dea, six years, which lived just next to the post office in the middle of Pristina. She was such a lovely child, she adored playing the piano. When I went to teach her, her two little sisters, four and three, and her little brother, Trim, two, they were the happiest family I have ever known. They were all watching my little day up playing piano and enjoyed those moments of magic that only music can bring. They were such wonderful children, full of energy and life, and I promised her that as soon as the situation would get a bit better, we would continue our piano classes. As I wanted to go home and to say farewell, her father, Mesut, a wonderful young man, stopped me for a coffee. It was his birthday that day. He wanted that we all celebrate together. He was not afraid at all of the war and the bombing. I'll stay here, he said. I do not have where else to go. This is my home. I found out later from my mom when I called her one day from the camp phones that their house was bombed when the PTK building was bombed. Only little Trim and her grandmother had survived. My beautiful and lovely Dea was not living anymore. Neither her two other sisters and her parents did make it. I remembered the birthday party, his last birthday party. I thought I would never be able to teach piano anymore. As I wiped the tears running through my face, I prayed to God that Dea and her family rest in peace in heaven, if there is one. But I promised to myself that I would celebrate my birthday in any circumstances. As we were celebrating my birthday today with a fresh cooked Turkish coffee in our new tent, I suddenly heard my daughter's cry outside the tent. She's having a stomach pain, but not, not only her, 
the two boys also. Fatos, my brother, says he feels that his stomach is like an aquarium. He's right. We have been eating fish every day. Our daily food is fish can, some onions, bread, and milk. I have never eaten more fish than this last week since we were placed in this refugee camp. I did not know what to do to ease the pain of my daughter. I went out of my tent and tried to get some help. An old lady sitting in front of the neighboring tent asked me why I'm so worried. I told her my problem. You should feed her yogurt, she said to me. Yeah, I said with cynicism. I do not see a shop here in the camp. There's no need for that, she told me. Do you have the milk of the day? Yes, I said. Have two packs of one liter each. Good, she said. Bring them here. She took the milk packs, opened those at the side, took a pot of yogurt she had for herself and put two spoons of her yogurt in my milk packs. Close them now, wrap them with a the cloth, put them up on the tent so that the sun can warm them up, she ordered. I did everything, she said. After a few hours, I opened the milk. What a surprise. It became a very thick, fresh yogurt. Hooray! My daughter's pain will cease. And it was my birthday after. What better present could I expect? In these circumstances, even a fresh-made yogurt in the middle of a refugee camp is quite a treat, you know. I felt privileged and blessed for being able to celebrate life. I will never forget this birthday. An amazing day to remember. Everybody is asleep now as I'm writing these lines under the light of a candle and a beautiful moon shining outside. I look out of my small tent and I see the clear sky and many shining stars. I will sleep tonight with a happy feeling. Tomorrow, it seems, will be a beautiful day. <clears throat> Here we are today, 12 years after, and we are celebrating Happy Independence Day of Kosovo. My five-year-old Sony also, Yone is also sending you best regards and wishing you all Happy Independence Day. And today, when I think back, life has treated me very well, actually. It's not that now we don't have any problems and challenges. Of course, as many of you, we have the life which is not easy. I have to manage two jobs, two full jobs, three children, well, actually four with my husband, and plus a doctoral degree and many music activities that I have to organize in my free time, you know. But I always make sure that I never forget to celebrate my, my birthday. I skip yogurt sometimes, you know. Sometimes I take cocktails now. I still have to take care of my blenda. She's now almost ready to get independent, so I have to still protect her. And I didn't make the dream uh, to become a stage pianist that I want. I see this white piano here. It was always in my dream, but I couldn't make it. But my daughter is doing that. She's in a good way to become a stage pianist. And you know, the hardest thing that I have to do now is giving love advice for my five-year-old. He's deeply in love, and I have to counsel him every time. <laughs> But I never forget to have fun, despite all these problems that I have in my life, and despite all the other memories that I have kept in my diary throughout these years, I never skip fun. So if you ever think that today it's a bit of not such a successful day or a short day for all the things you wanted to have, and if you think that hmm, you were not feeling successful, don't worry. There's another day for you, so just go and grab it. Thank you. Thank you.